Hello and welcome to the Florida Writer Podcast, a discussion about writing and other things. Recorded live at the 18th Annual Florida Writers Conference. Hello and welcome to this edition of the Florida Writer Podcast. Today I am lucky enough to have with me Janet Little. Janet, why don't you give me a 60-second elevator pitch about who you are and what you write. Okay, I go by my author name is Janet Franks Little, because Janet Little is a famous Scottish photographer, so if you Google Janet Little, you're going to come up with her first. But I write romantic comedies. I like to say that if you want to laugh, cry, and get a little wet, read one of my books, and um, I've always always wanted to be a writer. So this is what I found myself doing now in my life and enjoying it immensely. You've always wanted to be a writer. I actually started my high school's first literary magazine and I was submitting short stories to magazines in high school. But then in college, I decided to go a different route and I became a speech language pathologist. I guess I figured I'd like to eat and pay bills on a regular basis. So it wasn't until I was nearing retirement that I decided to give it writing a shot again. Speech pathology, you always liked words. I did. And you know, it's funny when I was working in schools every year, they gave you shirts that had the name of the school on them. And I always gave them away. And uh, one of the other teachers says, why why won't you wear the shirt? And I said, I don't like to wear clothes that have words on them. And she goes, let me get this straight. You're a speech language pathologist, but you won't wear anything that has words on it. I go, I guess that's true. And I don't know why. It's a dichotomy, but that's the way it is. And actually, I wrote really good evaluation reports. (laughs) So that's how you cut your teeth. You started off with high school literary magazine, and then you wrote great reports. Right. That's yeah. fantastic. Tell me about the first romance novel you read. I mean, back in high school, I read Gone with the Wind, if you wanted to say that was a romance novel, because the underlying theme of that is, is always, you know, not getting the guy you really want. But I would say in 1973, Kathleen Woodowis wrote The Wolf and the Dove. And I was working part-time, and one of my co-workers gave me this book. And I think she was the first one that really was the breakout author for the romance novel. And from that point, I was hooked. And of course, that's a historical romance. And but I've read I've read all different genres of romance. When you write your romance, do you stick with the traditional arc? I do. And the, the whole point, even though in a romance you must have what is called an H E A, a happily ever after, or a happily for now kind of thing. You will alienate romance readers if it ends up the male and female protagonists don't get together. That sort of falls into chick lit or something like that. But in a true romance, despite the black moment where you think this whole relationship is lost, you do have to figure out a way to get them back together. If not forever, then for now. So that's what I have been writing is, but the female protagonist does grow within the novel. Um, Either some weakness that she had at the beginning is resolved at the end and she becomes a stronger and better person with or without love. Do you have a favorite protagonist that you've written? I would say it would be my first one. They say, write what you know, especially in a first novel. And my first novel is the story of a gal who is a speech language pathologist who has dealt with a weight problem all her life. And so there you go. 
And a lot of people have identified with her and learned to accept that the title of the first novel is called Worth Her Weight. And in that novel, the main character learns that to face down one more weight bully, and she finds out that she's worth her weight no matter what it is. And when did you write this first novel? Uh, it was uh, it was published in 2016, so it was four years ago. How many more have you written? Well, uh, my third one just came out in December. As a matter of fact, Worth Her Weight won an RPLA Romance Award. And my third one, uh, Glass Promises, which was published in December, had won an unpublished RPLA and is now a finalist for the published RPLA this year. I've started a new series called Love on a Leash, in which a different breed of dog is one of the characters in the novel. And the dog is not only instrumental in getting the male and female protagonists together, but reuniting them at the end. I have the first in the series done, and uh, you can see I'm wearing a dachshund scarf. So guess which breed is in the first book called Love to the Rescue? And the second book, I'm, I've set a goal to finish it this month. I don't know. I might have to finish it next month with the NaNoWriMo exercise. But that's a book about pit bulls, and it's called Parts of a Whole. So I've also planned the next one. I do have some agents and an editor interested in the series, and, but they did have, want to have more than one book. So I wanted to get two or three done before I uh, put it out there. And series sell. Yes. Series sell. Do you find that writing a series is challenging? All my novels tend to be between 70 and 80,000 words, so I, I don't write the shorter ones. I like having a chance to develop the relationship a little bit more than I could in a smaller or shorter novel. And this is the first series I've done. And unlike other series where maybe it's a family and there's four sisters or brothers and then each successive novel uh, details or chronicles the love story of the different members of the family or people in the town or a group of women or men that are together. What I've done is the female protagonist and the dog is introduced in one scene in the first novel, very minor scene. And eventually I'm hoping that the readers will see, read the first book and think and realize when they start the second book, hey, her and the dog were in the first book. But I have a lot of people now who, when I have told them I'm writing this Love on a Leash series featuring a different breed and different people in each one, they're going, when are you doing Westies? How about a Rottweiler? You know? So I'm thinking that maybe I start some uh, contest where you pick the next breed. Oh, I love that idea. Janet, this has been a lot of fun. How can people get in touch with you? Well, I do have a, my website, which is JanetFranksLittle.com. And you can also reach me uh, via my email, which is Janet, not my email address. <laughs> well, they can connect with you with, on, on Through on my website. website. <laughs> yeah, I never email myself, but it's <laughs> Janet Franks Little also. Yeah, I'd love to hear from people, especially if they have any comments. Or... Well, I'm going to throw in the Golden Retriever as my oh. favorite breed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So, Janet, are you ready to switch to our rapid fire questions? Sure. Go for it. Mountain or beach? Mountain. Mountain. The all, even though I live here in Florida, the only time I go to the beach is when people come down from up north and insist that I take them. You have a favorite car. I have an unfavorite car. Oh, yeah? A Jaguar. Owned one for several years and became familiar with tow truck drivers in three counties. You're on a first name basis, <laughs> not speed dial. <laughs> you again. <laughs> All right. And what did you have for breakfast? I had a 
cup of tea that tasted a bit like coffee, like most hotels, they never have a designated urn for hot water only. And then I had a uh, pastry and bacon, a really healthy diet. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you so much for stopping by. This has been Allison Nissen, your host for the Florida Writer Podcast. Thank you very much. And I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you, Allison. I wish you very happy writing. Allison out. Life isn't always pretty, but at the end of the day, family, friends, laughter, and a glass of wine is usually enough to improve the view. Janet Franks Little brings the same realistic optimism to her contemporary women's fiction. Written with candor, humor, and depth, her stories confront real-life issues faced by women today. Divorce, infidelity, family, body image, social expectations, and of course, romance and relationships. She is the author of three wise and witty books, Worth Her Weight, The State of the Heart, and Glass Promises. She is currently working on a new series. You can connect with Janet on her website at janetfrankslittle.com. This has been another edition of the Florida Writer Podcast. For more information about the Florida Writers Association, visit us on the web at floridawriters.net.